Word of Life brought to you by jerichorehab.co.za Okay, good morning guys. Okay. So, um, thinking error 14, lonerism. So, a person leads a secretive life, one against the world. In addiction, we are busy with things that we know doesn't have everyone's approval especially the people that really cares for us. When we are doing things without approval, we are doing it basically in the dark. Knowing that I'm doing this, but that person shouldn't find out. Uh, we can look at it as simple examples, you know, uh, when you start smoking, the first period of your, your smoking career will be in the dark, without the permission of your, your family and your loved ones and the people that care for you. And then at the later stage, you know, uh, when you get caught out or when you decide that this is too much of a hassle to smoke scallum the whole time, uh, I don't want to go for a walk every time, so I'm just going to tell my parents that I'm smoking now. Then there's also not approval of your behavior, but people accept you the way you are. And with lonerism, we have different personalities around different people. Not everyone knows what we're busy with all the time. We like gray areas, we like um, being in the dark, getting away with things. That is the area we live in. In my life, I did some things, you know, I, I smoked, I, I, I did drugs, um, I gambled, um, I did other stuff and I did certain things with certain people in such a way that no one could really see the problem in my life. Everyone thought that I would do it in a moderate way. I would only do a little bit or I would only gamble once a week. Meanwhile, I would gamble once a week with one person. So at the time I had to go to, to rehab, my, my close friends didn't really see a need for me to go to rehab because I lived a lie in that gray area under the radar, not revealing what's really going on. So my parents could see that there's a big problem. He's out every night, he's, he's gambling every night, he's, he's doing drugs, his life is a mess, um, things are going missing. But my close friends didn't know how things fit into context. As a matter of fact, I gambled all the time. I did drugs all the time, just with different people at different days of the week. It's not nice standing here saying, you know, I gambled all the time and I did drugs all the time and my life was a mess all the time. But if you can't admit that, then you're still in denial. Because if you had any form of control of your circumstances, you wouldn't end up in a place like this. And by ending up here, it's just an opportunity where you can change it. And if it hasn't gone to that self-destruction point, you are lucky. And you can change your life and you can change your ways before it gets to that point.
With lonerism, we feel that everyone is against us. No one agrees with our lifestyle, with what we are doing. People don't agree because you're self-destructing. Your life's a mess and you're not moving forward. My dad used to say, Derki, I would always love you and I would always support you as long as you're doing the right thing. When I heard that statement, I would think there's partiality in that statement. Why only when I'm doing the right thing? Why would a parent support his son doing the wrong thing? You know, that is contributing to the destruction. That is when a parent will shut off, not offer any more support because the support isn't support anymore. When we exclude ourselves, it's very difficult for someone to support you. It's very difficult for people to assist you, to help you, to guide you if they don't know the full story. And in lonerism, you isolate yourself. You never share the full story with someone. You share bits and pieces. When you speak to people about your gambling problem, you forget to mention the part that I have a drug problem as well. So we never mention things in context. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For, in fact, the body is not one member, but many. We were not made to live in our own little world and our own little reality. We were made to live together because together we can be more effective as different members of one bigger body and you know if we look at members of a of a different body there need to be unity between them there need to be honesty between them let's say the the hand lies to the leg you know there's, there's not going to be unity or the hand tries to deceive your finger um, deceiving him saying touch it, you're not going to get burnt, no? <laughs> There's no deception in unity. And with lonerism, we focus our reality on deception. And as long as you, you're living in, in deception, lying your way around things, and you will never be happy, you will never have peace, and you will always be paranoid. You can't live in truth, you live your, your life revolving all these lies and deception and making people believe what you want them to believe. And it's such a hassle. It's really not a nice thing. And with lonerism, that is where you, you're heading. Maybe it's not that drastic as yet, but it's getting there. We're in an opportunity now where we can learn these, these thinking errors and we can really see how our lives were dysfunctional and we can take what we learn here and we can make an effort to change those things. You know, even if it's one simple thing like you can't live your life revolving on around lies and knowing that the one constant 
decision that I'm going to make is to be honest, to be truthful in my doings, in my walk forward. It's biblical, but it's just a life principle. You need to be honest in the way you walk, in the way you speak. In our walk, in our journeys, there's a lot of things we believe and there's a lot of things we refuse to believe. We believe it, it's not like that. And we cannot believe reality away. Let's look at an example. We would believe that I can do this on my own. Simply believing that you are able to do this recovery journey on your own won't make it possible. Believing it and doing it is not the same thing. Believing that you can perform an action does not perform the action. You still need to do it. You still need to push through and you still need to persevere. It's almost like the uniqueness thinking era, you know, where we feel that we are one in a million and I can do this and I don't need help and I don't need to involve other people in my life in order to walk this road, to walk this journey and I'll get through this. I'll be able to go out here and say no to temptation and I know they're going to support groups but I don't need to, what I've learned here is enough, I'm strong, I believe this and I'll make it out there. That is deceiving yourself. With deception, we sometimes don't realize that we are deceiving ourselves. If it was the reality, you wouldn't need to convince yourself that it's the reality. You would know that it's the reality. In lonerism, you know, we can add conditions. Okay, I'll share with this person, but I'm not going to tell him about that. As long as there's a condition in your life, whatever it may be, if there's a condition that will always come before you changing your life. And that condition will be the thing preventing you from pushing through when the times are hard. We need to speak to people, you know, we need to share what's going on and we need to seek for help. But in this seeking help process, you know, in speaking to people, it's important that when we speak to people, we keep our focus on God, thinking that I'm going to look for advice, I'm going to look for help, I'm going to a rehab, I'm going to try to change my life. There's going to be people advising me, guiding me, counseling me, but my primary hope will be in God opening the doors, making a way and giving me strength to get through this process and to get rid of the things that are holding me back.